Today on Capitol Hill, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in the hot seat facing tough questions about the integrity of America's banks. Meanwhile, America's stock market opens, let's see, in uh, 50 minutes from right now as Wall Street braces for another chaotic day in the wake of the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Our next guest has invested in many tech startups and has had a fortune of uh, a fortune of company money tied up in the failed Silicon Valley bank. Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary joins us now. Hey, Kevin, first off, there's so morning. many questions. I'm pretty, I'm pretty astounded by all the so-called experts who have different views of what we're going through right now. Larry Fink of BlackRock says this is a slow rolling crisis. How do you label it? I think it's a transition that's going to be occurring in how our banking system works because fundamentally what occurred here, let's just call it for what it is. You had a, a, a very weak management team. I, I've described them as idiots because that's what they are. And they were unsupervised by a negligent board. They were running the bank like a hedge fund, a, a very badly run hedge fund, and it blew up. And so now we have this dilemma, this moral crisis, and we'll certainly see it highlighted on the Hill today, because Yellen is going to propose, and has implicitly over the last 48 hours, that every single bank account in America, regardless of the size or whose money it is, it could be Chinese money or foreign money in that account, the taxpayer is going to guarantee that. Now, why that's a problem, and here's the long-term policy issue and what she's going to get absolutely grilled on today. It's going to be very tough to watch. If I'm a bank manager and I'm running a bank and you guarantee every deposit, what stops me from taking that money and putting it on black in Las Vegas? The answer is nothing, nothing, because I'm guaranteed, no matter how risky I want to work within the bank's confines, the only way I'm compensated is with stock. Sure. So I'm going to do everything in my power yeah. to run that stock price up, even if it blows the bank up. And that will happen over and over and over again. That's the debate we're having in America today. Because yes. they changed the rules. Kevin, how does this affect the small banks? Because we were told this morning that Bank of America was raking in $15 billion because so many panicked customers at small banks pulled their money out and went to some of the bigger banks. Let me ask a very difficult question that we're going to have to face very shortly. Does America need regional banks anymore in an internet age when all the banking is done online? The only thing you care about is the stability of your accounts and do they operate successfully and are you able to transfer money and do payroll? The truth is, and this is tough love, I'm sorry, we don't need regional banks. We're going to move to a model that other countries have done very successfully, like Canada, like Australia, right. where you have four or five or six banks that are behemoths, highly regulated, still public, you can buy the stocks in them, but they work successfully. The most successful country in 08 was the Canadian banking system. There's no regional banks in Canada. There's just giant behemoths. We don't need regional banks in, in America either. This is royally, I, look, I'm sorry, don't shoot the messenger. This is a fact we have to debate. And we're not gonna have regional banks, even if you guarantee the accounts, because right. people don't wanna take the 1% chance if something goes wrong. Yeah, but Kevin, like I'm from South Carolina and there are small regional banks in, in our state that have been run by families for generations. And some people trust those regional banks better than a big bank like SV, SVB because they have such a woke board. They know when they go to this mom and pop regional bank in South Carolina that the board's not like that. Well, apparently not enough people trust small regional banks because, as you just said, billions are moving out. What we've done with our companies over the last 48 hours is we've told all our CEOs two things. Number one, you have to distribute our cash across five institutions, no more than 20 percent in any bank. Mm -hmm. They've done that. Number two, you have to go to the government and get your employee retention credit, which everybody's forgotten about, $250 billion there. Every company can get it up to 26,000 per, per employee. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we've done both of those things. That's eff effectively a guarantee against payroll. Remember, this whole dialogue started around payroll. Yeah. Yesterday's yeah. payroll at the Silicon Valley Bank was in jeopardy for all the companies that banked out of there. But in the end, this bigger Yellen situation today will discuss should we, or morally should we, guarantee every account when bank managers are not held accountable for them anymore? And secondly, why do we need tiny banks? Yeah. What's the point?
I, I get it when you had to ride your horse to the bank. You didn't have the internet. <laughs> right. But now we don't need that. They want the personal touch. Everything's on their phone. Kevin, thank you very much for joining us uh, today. We'll see what Janet Yellen says live here on Fox later. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kevin. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.